Luis and Andres. This is the story about the beginning of the world according to the South Nam, the very ancient nomad dwellers of Tierra del Fuego, in the southern tip of South America. It's the myth of the Colossuses. The Colossuses? A Colossus is a giant being, and in this story they were gods. Wow! Wait, wait, you'll see. The Colossuses from Tierra del Fuego. The Maukel was the father of the universe, and also the father of Kenos, a colossus 120 feet tall. The Maukel sent his son to Earth, which had just been born, to give it some shape. Try to imagine that the entire Earth was flat. There were no mountains, no valleys, no jungles, no animals. Kenos went to Earth to follow his father's command, but in just a short time, he became very bored of being alone. So he looked up to the sky and told Temaukel, who gave him the ability to create other gigantic gods like himself. And so Kenos created Senuke, Ko, and Tayin. Now he was happy with his three brothers. They went all over creating mountains, woods, animals, and plants. All the living things on Earth were created by the giant brothers. Time went by, and one day Kenos felt very old, and he laid down to rest on the Earth. But he was immortal, and so in three weeks he was reborn young and strong again. How wonderful to be immortal! And they lived this way for hundreds and hundreds of years, traveling long distances and decorating the earth. One day, Koch, who was very, very tired, told Kenos that he didn't want to be reborn anymore. He wanted his soul, his Caspi, to be next to his father, the Maukel. Kenos looked at him sadly, because gods are immortal and they can't die, even if they want to. It's their eternal duty to serve the Maukel here on earth or in heaven by becoming a star. Koch was very sad because he never thought that being immortal would be such a burden. And then he started walking, and as he walked, salty teardrops fell from his face and landed on the earth. Soon there were so many tears that the sun couldn't dry them fast enough, and they flooded the creeks and valleys. He cried so much that when he wanted to return, he realized that the new body of water was so wide that he couldn't see the land on the other side. When Koch saw all that water, he understood this was to be his last creation, and he knew the final destination of his Caspi. He knelt, he kissed a dry rock, and he submerged himself forever to the bottom of the ocean, the ocean that his tears had just created.